Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Studio Lighting Kit for Modo. The Studio Lighting Kit is a tool that allows you to quickly add realistic and flexible studio lights to your Modo scenes. And you can access it from your Kits menu at the top right of your Modo Modes toolbar. It's the one with this softbox icon here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to permanently add it to my Modo mode so that I have access to it a little bit faster. So I'm just gonna click on the spanner icon to edit the workbench up here. And I'm gonna go pick to add, and I'm just gonna click on my Studio Light Kits, and you can see that's added the icon here at the top right. So with that done, I can dismiss the Kits popover. And if I now disable the Edit Workbench icon, I can click on the Kit button, and that opens a preview browser. And as you can see, within the preset browser, there are five different presets you can load. The main preset that the kit is based around is this light cards preset here. And this is the preset that I recommend you use 95% of the time. These additional presets are really here just for completeness, for when you want a more realistic lighting rig in your scene, or even if you want to use them as props. But for the time being, we're going to concentrate on the light cards. So I'm going to double click on the preset in order to load it. And if I then click outside of the popover to dismiss it, we can take a look in the scene and you can see that that has loaded a light into our scene. Now the light is rigged and the rig is as simple as I could make it while still giving the user maximum control. So let's take a quick look at the controls of the rig. At the base of the light, you can see there's this cone-shaped locator. If you click that, the move tool is automatically activated and you can move your light around. If you click on the light itself, that will automatically activate the rotate tool and you can rotate your light as you see fit. Now I'm just gonna drop the rotate tool by pressing the spacebar and I'm gonna click on this yellow control locator we have here. And that's going to bring up some additional controls for our rig. The first control is the light select control. And if you cycle through all the options, you can see that that is changing what is shown on the light card. And what you have here is 16 different HDR light images that you can use in your scenes. And obviously you can change these lights at any point simply by invoking this set of controls by clicking on the control locator. The next control is the brightness and that obviously allows you to control the brightness of the light. That won't be visible in GL. We'll have to see that in preview a little bit later. I'm just gonna click on the yellow circle here on the right to reset the value to default. Next, you have a scale control which allows you to size your light, either making it larger or smaller. You have a height control which allows you to lower or raise the light. And you have a ratio control which allows you to deform the light either vertically or horizontally. And the next two controls are Use Target, which when activated will always point the light at this spherical locator here. And when you select the locator, the Move tool is automatically invoked and you can simply place the locator on the spot that you want the light to point at. And the final control we have on the control locator is this Visible to Camera option, which will either hide or reveal the light within the render. So I'm just going to dismiss the channel hole popover by hitting spacebar. And because my light's at a weird angle, because I invoked the rotation tool earlier to demonstrate how it worked, I'm just going to click on this light again, and I'm going to reset the rotation to zero. Another way you can do this is to hit C to bring up the channel hole tool, and simply click on these yellow dots, and that will bring all the values back down to their defaults. So once again, I'm just gonna press space to dismiss the channel hall tool, and I'm going to click the locator at the bottom, and I'm going to move my light to place it roughly in front of the guitar, and then I'm going to invoke the control locator, and I'm going to bring the light down a little bit. And let's unpause preview so we can have a look, and you can see the light is starting to appear on the reflections of our object. And now I'm just going to reset the ratio of the light by clicking on this yellow circle to reset the value back to default. I'm going to scale the light up a little bit and I'm going to increase its brightness so we have a little bit more illumination on the guitar. 
Now, the really nice thing about using these light cards is you get much more interesting reflections on your objects because you get the natural gradation in the reflection that comes from the texture which is on the light. But because this is all coming from an HDR image, it's also extremely lightweight and renders really efficiently. This is not going to slow down your renders. It renders faster than an area light and renders much faster than more complex assemblies that try to mimic actual studio lights using geometry and subsurface scattering, etc. So once again, I'm going to hit space to drop my channel hall tool and I'm going to select the base of the light. And I'm just going to bring the light forward a little bit and that's just to change the distribution of the reflections on the guitar itself and also on the studio floor around the guitar. Now I'm going to open my Studio Lights kit once again and I'm going to double click to add a second light card assembly to my scene. Then I'm going to select that and just move it out slightly. And I'm also going to click the control locator, use target once again. I'm going to bring the target down roughly onto the guitar neck. And then I'm going to lower this light a little bit and increase its brightness just to add a little bit of fill lighting to the scene. And if I want to adjust the fill lighting, I can simply select the base locator and then just move the light around until it's illuminating the parts of the guitar that I want it to shine on. And because I've got use target activated, I know that the light is always going to be pointing at the guitar. So next I'm going to return to the first light and I'm going to cycle through some of the light select options just to see how that affects the reflections on my object. And you can see as I cycle through the lights, we get completely different lighting on the guitar and we get a lot of really interesting variations in the reflections. Every single light has different reflective qualities and that just allows for a lot of flexibility and realism when cycling through these options. So you can basically pick the type of reflections that best suits the scene that you're lighting or the object that you're trying to show off. So one of my favorite options is this translucent umbrella because it adds just enough detail to the reflection to make the reflection more interesting but without being too busy. And so by using this assembly, I'm able to get really lifelike and interesting reflections in my objects. And I wouldn't be able to achieve results like this using an area light. But at the same time, this assembly is really lightweight and renders really efficiently. Another use case for the studio lighting kit is to complement my instant lighting kit for when you need some additional control or to add additional lights. So here I have a scene where I've done the preliminary lighting with the instant lighting kit. So I'm just going to bring up the controls for the instant lighting kit and you can see that if I rotate the environment that's changing the lighting. So I'm just going to undo that and then I'm going to dismiss the instant lighting kit popover. And what I've done is I've already added one of the studio lighting assemblies and I'm just going to re-enable it and you can see that that then adds a key light on top of the lighting that was already being provided by the instant lighting kit. And so this is really useful for those times when you need some additional control that the instant lighting kit might not provide and also when you want those more detailed reflections that you get from these reflector cards. And finally, I'm going to show you the functionality of the additional more detailed rigs that are provided with the kit. So let's load this softbox. I'm just going to double click on it in the preview browser to load it. Switch to camera view and let's just position the camera so we can see the softbox. And I'm going to activate preview so we can see it obviously in action. I'm just going to return to perspective view to show you the controls more clearly. If you click on this circular locator, that's going to bring up a channel hall tool and you can drag anywhere in GL in order to change the rotation of the softbox. If you want to reset it to default, just click on the yellow circle here. I'm going to drop the tool. Next, I'm going to click on this cylindrical locator and when that channel hall comes up, I can simply drag anywhere in GL to change the height of the softbox. And finally, if I select this white control locator, that also brings some additional options. I can control the brightness of the light and each assembly comes with a few variations on the quality of the light itself. The matte cap on off option is simply a convenience 
which allows you to see the geometry more clearly in GL. So as I hope you'll agree, these assemblies are a really useful addition to Modo. The light cards in particular are very flexible and powerful and give you lots of different options for studio lighting.